Welcome back to the channel. What I'm doing today, I'm filling this seat box up with all of my boat fishing gear that I'm going to need. Um, the way I do it, I have essentials which I make sure I take with me. And then, depends on the day what I'm fishing for. If it's a wreck fishing day, I'll have my rig wallet with my wreck fishing gear in. Um, taupe fishing, I'll have my taupe traces and so on. So for example, I'm planning on going out very soon. This has got a few of my taupe traces in it. I will do a video on making these traces up. They are super simple, super cheap, and they work really, really well. Um, I've not got many left, to be honest. I'm running a bit low, so I have got to make up some more anyway. But yeah, as you can see, that's my tote wallet. This will be wrecking rigs for bait, fishing for ling, stuff like that, as you can see. Um, this is very similar to the fish locker wrecking rig. There's not much difference, to be honest. They've got a 10 ohm meat hook. I think it's 250 pound mono on these. That, the only reason why, it's what I've got handy for my taupe traces. And then you've got muppets on there, different colors, oranges and greens. Um, yeah, so that's it. And then in the back, I've got a few. These are 6 ohm on probably 80 pound mono for fishing for things on the bottom, spur dogs, huss, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Handy little wallets. Anyway, what we're going to do, I'm going to go through everything I take with me when I'm boat fishing. Um, a lot of you all know, I've sort of knocked beach fishing on the head, so I'm going to start using this for my boat fishing. It's quite comfortable to sit on with a backrest, and you can get everything I need in here. So what we'll do, I'll go through it all, and basically load it into the box, and just basically I'm going to show you what I take. If anyone out there is new, or is unsure what they think they might need, I'll pretty much cover it all in this video. Everything you're going to need for boat fishing will be in this box. To start off with, there is another video where I explain about the rams on the box and everything. You don't have to have them. It's, it's cheap, it's only about 12, 13 quid, somewhere around there. And it stops this slamming on your fingers or on the back of your knuckles when you've got your hands in there. Um, as you can see, we've got a tray in the back here which holds all my leads. These are just six ounce grip lead moulds without the grip wires for boat leads basically. Um, you can carry some spare line in here if you want to carry spare line. Little compartment here for little odd bits. Um, pair of scissors there. So, but I have been through this in another video so don't want to talk about all of that. It's already there. So what I'm going to do, basically, got a little side tray. I'll take this with me. It's handy just to stick on there. You can drop anything you want in there. You can have your bait in there if you wanted to. On a boat, generally, you've got a chopping board somewhere. Not always. If you want to chart a boat, this is perfect because you can just leave it on the side of your box. Keeps the mess off the top of the seat. Generally, when you're on a chart a boat or anything, you generally cut your bait here. Well, with a side tray, you don't have to, so you don't get a dirty ass. But this is obviously going to go in first at the bottom out of the way. Um, what we'll try and do is go through the essential items, which I'll take. Obviously, I over prepare most of the time. I do take too much stuff. What you got, we've got a couple of filleting knives. These are only cheap, nothing special. You can see the blade's a bit pitted, but it's perfectly fine for cutting bait. Inbuilt sharpener. A lot of you may ask what knife it is. It says Gerber on there. I think I paid about eight pounds for that, maybe two or three years ago. Decent sheath, which is what you need when you're on a boat. Whenever you use the knife on the boat, always put it back in the sheath, never leave it out. So, got the knife, which will go in. I've got a priest for any fish we want to take. Put it out, it's misery. Don't just leave it suffering, there's no need for it. So if you're gonna take a pollock, take a bass, take something, give it a quick clonk on the head. It, it don't hurt. To be fair with pollock on wreck fishing, if you was wreck fishing for pollock, generally they are dead anyway when they come up. Um, they get barotrauma or the bends as they call it. The pressure change on the way up from the wreck being so deep, basically the blow. Um, they do kick and stuff, they are moving, but they are pretty much out of it. So yeah, we take a priest. Um, what else do we have? These two items are very important to take, in my opinion. We've got the disgorger there, which obviously you put on your line on your hook. Um, basically the hook's in the fish's mouth. You put this onto your line, slide it down your hook, pull the line that way, and then the bend of the hook is through there, and you bounce it and the fish pops off. You don't even have to touch the fish. If the fish is slightly hooked, a bit deep, a decent pair of forceps, these lock. So when you grip the hook, you can lock it onto the hook and you can get down and turn it out. Obviously if the fish is seriously deep hooked, 
don't get this all the way down into its like gut because you're just going to kill the fish anyway. Um, you have to make a decision, but this is for if it's not lip hooked. If it's a bit further down, this can be a, a handy tool to have. These in my box are always to hand, they go there. Same as this, they go there. It's just easy to grab, it's quick to grab, and no hassle. Another thing, we've got a pair of scissors here. I also take a small pair of scissors. Um, you can't have too many pairs of scissors when you're fishing. You always misplace a pair somewhere. So I've got a little handy pair here. The little pair goes on that front tray. I've got the bigger pair there. The little ones are generally better for cutting off tag ends and stuff rather than the big clunky ones. I've also got another knife. This is just a cheap knife. I don't know what that is, a leader filleting knife. A little bit of a bend. You can fillet the fish out there, you can gut the fish, same as the other knife, it's just a spare. So we take that as well. To be honest now, that's the essentials for the box. There's nothing else you really need as an essential. The rest of it is by choice. So we've got a priest, a couple of knives, a couple of pairs of scissors, disgorger and forceps. There's nothing really else that's essential if you're going out fishing. This is just my opinion anyway. This, I'm not saying this is what you have to have. It's my opinion. It's just what I prefer to take. Obviously now, moving on, it depends what you're fishing for on the day. Um, I will definitely always keep line in my box, no matter what fishing I'm doing. This is some 80 pound um, Kaiki eye cast. This is cheap line, not really well, and it's brilliant line. I always keep that in the box. We've got some here, Asso Classic. This will probably be used for wreck fishing on my leaders, running down to my lures. You can use 20 as well. I don't know where I got this from, but I'll use that. We've got some 60 pound, can be used for leaders again. So we've got a few spools of line in there. Got a little box here with a mixture of leads. This is always carried with me. It's a bit of a pain because of the weight, but yeah, we've got, we've got some bigger leads. We've got some 10 ounce leads. There's probably eight ounce. Even got some little grip leads. Um, squid jigs, which I've never used yet, which I would like to use. Basically, it's like a mandrel. You take all sorts of stuff that you're probably never gonna use, but yeah, that's the little box that I've got right there. Mixture of stuff, um, some more little plier things. We've got these little stainless steel pliers off eBay for a couple of quid, and they've rusted like mad. <laughs> Lesson learned. Um, got some little clips here. Spin link clips, I use these for my bass fishing. Um, we've also got some small hooks there. Not sure what hooks they actually are, but I'll probably use them for prawn fishing, live bait sort of thing. Got a lighter in there. And that's that little box. This one always goes with me. It's just got a few handy little spares in there. The next box that I take is one of these little sorters. This is a Reiko assorter. We've got some six mil beads, power swivels. We've got little hooks, bigger hooks, medium hooks, floats for live bait fishing. Um, this is for prawn fishing really with the small floats. Zip sliders, thermolinks, bigger swivels there, and more hooks. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Just a few odd little bits here and there that you're gonna need. So that also goes in always. Next thing, pair of scales. Um, these ones, there's a bit of a laugh about this. These are freshwater digital scales. Um, I've had people say you can't always see fish on them because it's for fresh water. Obviously, I'm just joking, but these scales are seriously accurate. They're not cheap. They probably retail between 80 to 100 pound. But when you, you, you weigh bags of sugar at a kilo, for example, roughly, you could put one bag on and it tells you it's a kilo and you can put 10 bags on and it's 10 kilos. Cheaper scales will, will change. Um, you can't hold these scales here to weigh. You have to hold it there. I've tested it. If you hold it there, it messes up the weight. But as you can see, they are seriously sensitive. I'm hardly touching that. And you can get ounces on there, look, one ounce, two ounce. I always take a set of scales, you don't have to, it's not a necessity, it's just nice to weigh some fish. Um, weighing fish on a boat, you will never get a 100% accurate weight. Boat's moving, it's rocking, even on a flat calm day, you still will not get an accurate weight. But it's nice to have an idea. Like, um, you catch a bass, that bass that I caught my personal best, it was bouncing, like, between high six pound and low seven pound mark, so I just called it a seven pounder. So I always keep a set of these in my box. Something I did miss out, which I'd say necessity, a pack of wipes of some sort, a rag, anything, just to keep your hands a bit cleaner. Otherwise you get all your crap, you get all your gear covered in mess and crap. 
feathers. Um, I always keep a few packs of these in there, always, because you just never know when you're going to try for some mackerel or, or some bait. So, let me packs we've got here. These are actually really, really cheap and really good quality feathers off eBay. I think it's 10 of them. I think it works out just under a quid each, something like that. But generally, I'd take five, six packs, something like that. What we got there? We got six packs. They'll go in. I don't take all of my feathers because if anything gets wet in there, any water gets inside these, it rusts them up. I'm not going to use more than six packs in a day. It's not going to happen. These last really well. I've had these on for a quarter of a season and absolutely hammered the mackerel. They don't fall apart. The hooks do rust, but you still catch mackerel on them. Um, bait elastic. I've got this is everywhere. I've got loads of it. Um, I like to take some bait elastic, but I don't use a hell of a lot on boat fishing. Um, but I always take some. So I'll chuck a spool of bait elastic in there. Um, me, I'm a bit of an over prepper. I take two of everything. So I don't really use the elastic, but I still take two. Because if I lose one, drop one, anything like that, I've got a spare. We've got a few wrecking booms here. These are the metal spinning collar ones. I really like these ones, they are good. They're not cheap, but they are really effective. These live in my box permanently, no matter what I'm fishing for, because I could end up using them on a sandbank, generally anywhere, anything. With a wrecking boom, you will see videos on the channel with me using these. Um, it's a spinning collar look, as you can see. You clip your lead there, that ties to your main line, and then you tie a leader on there. Four, five, six, seven, eight foot, ten foot, whatever you prefer. So I always keep them in the box. Going with the theme of the other one, I've got a lighter in there and I've got another lighter here. Always handy to have, you never know what you could use it for. Even the cooker on the boat, when the electric thing goes and you can't light the cooker, you can't have a cup of tea, you've got a lighter, flick it on. Um, bit of spare line, this is just 18 pound black line for anything. It could just literally be used for anything and it's easy to store in this box because it goes up there out of the way. Right then, we've got some cheap elastic in case we ever need it for anything. So we've got three spools of elastic and then some cable ties. These can be used for anything. Cable ties are really, really handy tool to have. So I always chuck a few cable ties in. To be honest, I don't think I've ever needed to use them yet, but you just never know. Right then, that is pretty much what I take. The things I add now is for the targeted species. It depends what we're actually fishing for. For example, this wallet here, we've got bream rigs and stuff in it, as you can see there. It does need filling up again, really. We've got a few months left anyway for that. But yeah, bream rigs and there's a few spare ones in the back. Um, generally, depends what I'm fishing, uh, what I'm fishing for, but I generally will take that all the time anyway, because them little rigs can be used for anything. Right then, this one is my taupe wallet. This only goes in this box if I think I'm going taupe fishing. Um, don't know when you'll see this video, but we're potentially out fishing tomorrow. Mark's boat went in the water today. So, what you lot don't know yet is, that's what we're going for. So, that is definitely going in the box. I've got a wreck fishing wallet here, which I showed you just. We're not wreck fishing, so that's not going to be going in the box. We keep that stored. Um, I've got my bass lures. Possibility I will not be taking these. Um, there's a good mixture of bass lures. Surface, lures, divers shallow divers all sorts i might take these i'm not sure what we're doing yet i might take them we'll see um the new fathom that's loaded up with diode j braid 29 pound and then it's just got a little wind on nylon leader on the top if i'm fishing for taupe i'll either tie to that leader or i'll just step the leader up to around 80 pound you'll see that in the video anyway i'll show you exactly what i'm doing like i always do so this reel will be going in the box what I'd like to do is get some real tidies or clips which holds the reels up there, out of the way. Stop some rattling around in the box. Um, and then there's some leader there for the bass. Technically for tomorrow's trip, that's it, I'm done. That is all I need to store in the box, that's everything. Obviously I've got my fishing rods and the reels I'm taking, but yeah, that's the box done. This is what I'll carry when I go fishing on the boat and obviously with the tackle side of it, the terminal tackle, the lures, all of that, it depends on the day and it depends what I'm fishing for. I wanted to show this just for the newbies out there really who are not sure what to take. Um, there's a mixture in here, array of stuff. 
Do you need all of it? No, I suppose you don't need all of it. You could get away with having half the amount of what I've got in here. But over time, with experience and stuff, it's just, you're better off to take a little bit more and spare elastic, spare scissors, spare knives. Because things do happen on a boat, you do lose them, the drop over the side, stuff like that. It's happened to me quite a lot. Well, you've probably seen videos, I chucked a rod in the sea. <laughs> but you do lose things over, well, I lose things over the side of the boat, I should say. So having a spare knife and spare stuff, it's just safer. So that's it, really. That's it, ready to go. That will be... That is ready for me to go fishing. All I need to do is sort out a few rods, sort out my bait, and that's it. So hopefully, after this video, the next video you will be seeing is us catching a load of taupe. But that depends if we find them. Um, we might not get them, we might get them. We really don't know, that's the fun about fishing. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this video helpful, just to give you an insight of what to take with you or what you could take. If you can, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.